parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Hey guys, it's Wrestling Mayhem Show, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter for episode 500 and, jeez, I don't even know anymore, uh, 562 of the Wrestling Mayhem Show on this special night. And we got a great show coming at you with Krista Joseph of Lucha Underground talking about Netflix, Lucha Underground, exposed to the world. Probably a better way I could have put that. But with us right now is straight out of Disney World, but Poughkeepsie, New York currently. It is the mouse-eared blazing mad mike sorg i'm drinking vodka i'm wearing spider-man mouse ears it's gonna be a great fucking show there you I go love it. also with us on the couch mainstream matt you want to see my no i'm dar impersonation yeah i'm still working on it okay sorry, all, right, all right we'll, we'll work on it also <laughs> with us alicia Fa. Yes. I, I got more of um, hi larry What's up? <laughs> Larry's here, who got to watch 205 Live live last live. night as uh, yes. SmackDown and 205 was here in the in, in Pittsburgh, not in the studio. That'd be weird. It would be hard to fit Happened in, it, the, in studio. the studio. Yes, Noam Dar, right over there, five way, right by that couch. Um, looks bigger on TV, doesn't it? Uh, so anyways, <laughs> check out everything wrestling mayhem show.com. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeart radio and video versions on the YouTube and Facebook page for wrestling mayhem show. And, uh, of course, please, you can check us out. Uh, drop a line to that email address. Good times. Good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or four, one, two, two, zero, six, WMS zero. Please put that on your phone. Call us when you're drunk. Call us when you're pissed after mania. Call us when you're drunk and pissed after mania. That'd be great. And also, you can a big shout to our friends um, uh, at the 405 mediacom been uh, supporting the show and putting us on 9 p.m. Pacific time every day. You've been getting a dose of mayhem over there on their live stream and posted over there as well. Um, and of course, a shout out to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. If you want to join us too, there's some very special extra stuff uh with our guest of honor tonight and uh and and so much more that we got into that we're not shared on here that will be very interesting trust me um and uh of course thanks to our our friends our fans the fan of the show level bo diggity Woo! ed burke the matthew and jennifer carlin's foundation for podcast betterment trey gar check out breaking trey fabe and his contributions to indie wrestling.us bobby fj town and at the pocky club level they'll be getting that mayhem show gold with krista joseph tina keys christopher bishop mad mike henceforth referred to as the american kevin owens um, right, hey, Sork. Ke- i think there's some pictures of kevin owens wearing the mouse ears too right sure probably I think I've seen that out there. So, I mean, he's a, he's a good father, Sorg. I'm sure he's been to Disney. Absolutely. And then punched Mickey Mouse right in the face. Go <laughs> <laughs> give Goofy a Papa powerbomb. And, of course, our special guest we have with us this week to talk on this. Uh, it's like a Lucha Holiday, Lucha Underground, on Netflix today on this uh, March 15th. Chris Joseph is joining us from, uh, from Los Angeles. Uh, thanks for joining us again, Chris. Oh, thanks for having me back, Sorg. Uh, I'm excited to uh, talk a little bit about Lucha on Netflix, uh, uh, among other things with you guys. So um, thanks for having me here. Thanks a lot. And, uh, and, and and I'm excited for this. You guys are out there. I did finally finish season two of Lucha Underground, so I'm caught up a little bit more. Uh, so please be Netflix. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt, for your applauding right there. So <laughs> uh, I'm so- very proud of you, Sorg. So of course, you know, we talked about you know you've been on the midweek war a couple of times, and uh, we you know you, you know talked about you've been on El Ray for a bit here, and and people find you on iTunes then, uh, and this has really kind of opened you guys up to to a ton more eyeballs uh, being on Netflix now and, and really really worldwide. Uh, how's that feel to get get that many more people uh, uh, exposed to this kind of thing? Uh, it's it's great after all the talk. After all the speculation, after all the hashtags, Netflix needs Lucha, blah, 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 blah. 
finally, uh, Lucha Underground ha- ha- has made it to Netflix, right, Mike? Finally, Lucha Underground has come back to Netflix. Hashtag Lucha and chill. Hashtag <laughs> Lucha and chill, y'all. Lucha and chill. Uh- there, is, there is nothing. And this is, this is a pro tip for you guys out there, and you know I'm serious because I'm wearing mouse ears. There is nothing that will get your lady more hot than by watching Sexy Star beat the fuck out of someone. <laughs> there you go. It is a little bit of a women's lip thing, isn't it? But <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but but anyways, you, I mean, you guys, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you talked about it's got to be an interesting process getting that out there. I mean, you, 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 you talked about like you know. Um, um, how many languages are you guys exposed to now, for instance? Oh, gosh. Um, I think currently right now it's in just uh, Latin America, North America. Um, yeah, like South America. Like I think it's only in North and South America only right now. Mm-hmm. So in, on Netflix. But yeah. we also air in France, in Germany, in, uh, in uh, uh, some parts of Asia. So, uh, you know, I think we're in all sorts of different languages but as far as uh netflix goes i think it's uh only if only a few but but uh you know uh, in order to go other places that's part of the process is mm-hmm. you know you, you know especially europe you have so many different countries with so many different languages that uh it becomes uh it's not the easiest issue I thought it was interesting that they had a uh, a Netflix trailer for you guys. Like it, it, it felt like they're presenting it, and because I don't think I've seen this too much with other shows that aren't actually um, um, Netflix originals. But like it, it, it felt like you guys got like the full on treatment going into this. Yeah, I think they gave us a little love. I was surprised about that. I had never seen that trailer, so I was uh, I was pretty hyped on. It. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's my that's my show. Uh, so uh, so that was good and. Uh, it was cool to kind of uh, show it off to friends and family too, who have been wondering what the hell I've been doing for two and a half years. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> and, and that's it. Um, Chris, yeah. if, if somebody out there, wrestling fan or not, who is uh, stumbling upon Lucha Underground on their Netflix, can you give them like the the thirty second pitch explanation of why they should be watching this? Oh gosh, uh, I guess newbie? if you ever. If you love wrestling, if you've ever loved wrestling in the past, maybe you've even lost your interest or you love it now, um, I think uh, it's definitely a different take on it. But it has some elements of kind of old school uh, wrestling and characters. The characters are larger than life. The storylines are, are larger than life. It's like a video game or, or a cartoon has come to life in, in this kind of temple in Boyle Heights. And I, and I think the action – uh, is is probably the fastest, most hard hitting action of any wrestling show that airs on television today. So, I, 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 and you know, I don't, I hate to brag, and I know I'll probably get crap for this, but <laughs> I don't think anybody can touch us in uh, in that aspect. You know, like the, the athletes that we have on the show and the performers, they just they just don't care. It's it's <laughs> the things that they can do are just incredible. The risks that they're willing to take, and I don't think anybody else does it like us. What do you think about um, attracting non-wrestling fans to watching this? Do you think there's that I, opportunity now? I definitely think that's a possibility. Um, I think with the kind of storylines and the, the way we take it as kind of a real episodic television show, um, is that, you know, with cliffhangers and all that, like you can get wrapped up in the storylines and it's really fun. And I just think it's it's just so different and unique, I think, to the way that, you know, the average person thinks about professional wrestling when they see it and uh and i think that that definitely becomes intriguing and you know i I personally have heard lots of stories of like you know a guy who oh at first i know that the you know a guy who who takes it home and now watches it with their wife gets into it and their wife is a bigger fan than they are so you know i think that goes you know or, or or girls who show it to their boyfriend or somebody who shows it to their mom uh, and now all of a sudden their mom is like a huge fan. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Uh, I think it definitely has the ability to, to, to reel people in. And I think that really comes down to the stories and to the athletic ability of the performers and, and the stuff that those guys are doing. is just insane. Yeah, I, I know when I was like, because I've been so excited about this. When I posted about on Facebook, I literally said to all of my friends on Facebook, 
if we have ever agreed on anything in pop culture, just watch one episode of Lucha Underground because it has like because I have a lot of friends who are comic book fans, not wrestling fans. Yep. I believe that they will truly be engrossed by the characters that Lucha Underground has because Lucha Underground doesn't treat its fans like they're idiots. They treat their fans like it's paying like they're paying attention. And that's the most important thing. Like that's what serious shows like Breaking Bad or Flash or Arrow or stuff like that. That's what they do. They treat their fans like, hey, these people have watched all these shows. They know what's going on. We don't have to reintroduce concepts to them. They'll get it. Like that that's the best thing about Lucha Underground. That's why I'm so excited that it's coming out to so many people now. Yeah, I think it's a, that's a great point, especially with like, you know, the popularity of comic book characters and movies and I think we kind of fit right in with the action and 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 the excitement and the kind of fun characters and the mystical powers and, and everything that comes along with it. So, uh that is uh that's definitely I think a, a, a place to to kind of hook a new viewer for sure. Absolutely. I, all right. I, I think we're all like pleading with our friends like guys you have an, you have the advantage of this uh myself I, I was pointing out, like if you've ever had an inkling of pro wrestling interest and happen to like robert rodriguez movies check it out you know yeah. so yeah in, in my head canon and i chris you can confirm or deny this okay. dario cueto was the owner of the bar in from dust till dawn <laughs> there have been so many theories about uh, the connection between uh, <laughs> between Lucha Underground and Dust Till Dawn, and if they're in the same universe. Like that, that uh, that's always been my headcanon. Like he saw what happened there, he cut his losses and said, "You know what? If I'm gonna have this much violence, I may as well promote it." <laughs> <laughs> so may, you know, maybe that'll be a big reveal. Uh, you know, who knows? You have to you have to tune in and watch. If, if Clooney ever shows up. That would be amazing. Hey, there's oh, a- yeah. Tell me about it. If <laughs> 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 really it, ever shows up, it would be really amazing. Isn't there the Dust Till Dawn <laughs> series still going? Like this, is, like, this could be a crossover possibility, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I, somebody had told me, and I don't know if they did. I know uh, Cage played a vampire in one of them. But uh, somebody oh, had told shit. me, I, I don't know if they ever did it, but in like one of the bar scenes that, that Lucha Underground was playing on, the, uh, playing on the TV in the bar. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> I had heard that. I don't know if that ever actually happened. I have never got. To, I've only watched like season one, so I never got to watch. Uh, um, two and three. Shared universes are a huge thing now. If that's a shared universe, <laughs> you hey, you've got me watching from dusk till dawn. <laughs> <laughs> Serious, because I've never watched it. But also, that would be amazing. Also on Netflix, yeah. by the way, if you want to check out what that's about. So <laughs> if Vampiro sure. is just like the conduit for the shared universe, that would be the best <laughs> thing in the world. Yeah, totally. <laughs> That's awesome. We do have a question in here. Of course, there's been some news. I, I think this is since you guys have uh, talked last. I, I didn't listen to your last interview because I, I where I'm at, I don't want to be spoiled other than what I've already seen in, in the temple uh, for season three. Um, but uh, Bobby's thing just moved. Um, so there's been some news with AAA uh, going on recently, and I don't know how much you can answer this. Uh, and I, I know season three is in the can, what we're going to see. Uh, can you answer if uh, Pentagon Dark, uh, you, you can still use the name or the one with Phoenix? I guess there's some stuff going on with AAA right now and like the ownership or something. I don't know what you're talking about specifically. Mm-hmm. Um, like what, what, what the question I, is. I think Pentagon left, if I'm not, res- if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and there was like some controversy around that, or maybe this just hasn't come, come up since you're between seasons. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm kind of out of the loop a little bit, but I do know I knew that there was some kind of controversy uh, that, that Pentagon had decided to leave to leave uh, uh, AAA. But um, I, 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 the only thing I know is that Pentagon has a contract with Lucha Underground, so he has to be Pentagon on Lucha Underground. Yeah, and yeah, that's the way it is. So to me, that's really all that kind of concerns me in the show. I, um, mm-hmm. you know, I don't really know what the what his deal with triple a was and how that worked out so i i don't really you guys are the you, uh, there's a partnership but you guys are basically separate entities right oh uh, yeah in a way i mean yeah. we have a lot of this we have you know obviously there's there's the all don family that owns triple a that are you know big backers of, of lucha underground but um you know in the end it's like mgm has their characters of on lucha underground and then triple a has has their characters and then we kind of share some of them and, and you know so the contracts yeah. to do that tv show are, are kind of its own 
it's its own thing. Because if, if that was the case, it's like I don't work for AAA. I right. work for okay. I work so so Pentagon wouldn't have to come out as like Kerwin White or anything like that. <laughs> uh, Mooch Underground, no. <laughs> that would be great. Pentagon took up golf. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how do you say? How do you he say? How do you say clubs. birdie in Spanish? He gets so mad, he just keeps breaking clubs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he'd be the happy Gilmore of Lucha Underground. Yeah, yeah. He 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 won't he won't put a score. He won't he won't get like a bogey. He'll put a zero. All the yeah, time. just zero, mm-hmm. zero, zero. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, not now. Gosh, we got to do an alternate universe for Pentagon's a golfer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can always do. Yeah, I mean, the Flash is doing. You, you could have a musical episode too, right? I mean, oh, I know. mean, don't tell me. I, I will. But the, the crazy stuff we've done on Lucha Underground, do not put it past it. It's ever been I, talked about to do that. because I'm I sure would love to see that. an April Fool's episode where Dario is the nicest guy in the world. Yeah, we had thought about doing an April <laughs> Fool's episode. We thought about doing a Christmas special. We thought about all sorts of fun <laughs> oh, stuff. So, oh, uh, please. All right, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Chris, I speak for the entire <laughs> wrestling populace <laughs> when no, I doesn't. say, please, <laughs> please do a Christmas special. <laughs> Please, for the love of God, do a Christmas special. I, I love that this this always turns into like storyline, like brainstorming ideas. I know. Like Joseph, That's the know? other reason I, he comes on. I Sorry. want to see a Christmas special of Lucha Underground so badly. I'm writing things in my head as that's right, I'm thinking that's right. of it. Yeah, I mean, you can watch it every year, like like Frosty the Snowman or Rudolph the Red Nose. <laughs> I, I, I would watch that in conjunction with Die Hard. <laughs> uh, uh, Garza, Gar- that's it. That would be my Christmas viewing. It would just be Lucha Underground Christmas episode, Die Hard. Oh, Boom, yes. that's it. Um, uh, Garza's in the chat room. He says, Lucha U, uh, college version of Lucha Underground. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you had something you wanted to ask. Well, I was just I was just curious because Chris has been around the wrestling business for a long time and and we're we're kind of I'm kind of looping back around to Pentagon and uh, kind of the issues that he's having, you know, breaking away from AAA, trying to take some of the character that they created with him. Um uh, we've heard about this has become a big deal with uh TNA slash impact with broken Matt Hardy trying to break off and trying to take that character with him. I'm just like curious, like just in your experience, like if you what, kind of just what your thoughts are about when something like that happens and, and, and how you feel about how much ownership a, a performer takes of, of of what they create as opposed to what the writers or what the wrestling promotion creates. So, I mean, it, it's certainly a different situation with Lucha Underground, but um, sure. it, it happens a lot in Mexico. I know w- with a lot of the characters that those promotions. Create. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think you put it this way, like, um, I, I, gosh, this is putting me on the spot and this is a personal thing. And from my experience, it's like Vince controls <laughs> all of his characters. And, and, I, I, um, you know, I think in some instances, sure. You know, Hulk Hogan is Hulk Hogan wherever he goes or, or whatever. But, um, you know, you don't necessarily see, I don't know. Think of somebody who was a character there that went somewhere else and became somebody different. Uh, they, they had to become somebody different. Like, you know, for instance, I don't know. This is a bad example, but, you know, if, uh, I don't know, uh, the big oh, boss yeah. man showed up in WCW, he couldn't be the big boss man. Yeah, he'd uh, be yeah. Ray Trailer. Right. <laughs> so, so uh, you know, I, I, I understand that part, and I also understand the companies want to protect their investment and their intellectual property. And, and, um, you know, that's part of signing contracts and things like that, that I don't really understand that lawyers understand. And, and, yeah. you know, I don't know what, where and what, and what was signed and who was signed. I mean, do I think obviously, you know, the performers had a huge part in defining the characters that they are. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I think, it's I don't know it's it, it's it's an odd thing and it's that's pretty much for lawyers to figure out not really not really for me as long as I know that I have my talent or who I have and who I don't have that's really all that matters for me and I have to continue doing my job and figure it out and put the puzzle together uh, that kind of you know contracty stuff and who owns that that's really not my not my specialty in this business nor do I ever want it to be have you ever been told no based on something you wanted to do with a character that maybe was, I don't want to know, like, like 
trademark, you know, in, intellectual property of something else? Because it seems like like a lot of these disputes get bogged down oh. in just the names, you know. So you know, yeah, you, you're names. John Morrison in, in in WWE, and you go to Lucha Underground, you become Johnny Mundo, but you know, it doesn't really change that much, you, you know. So it seems like yeah. it's, it's more about a name than it is the character. Whereas you know. Well, even Alberto Del Rio and Alberto Patron. I mean, yeah. It did. Uh, so I mean, I, I mean I, again, I don't know how the what the contracts were that were signed between these two people, or the agree, or the agreement that was made. Um, it's also a foreign country that has different things as well. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I, I don't know how. You know, I, I really don't know how, how they <laughs> feel about it. It's honestly, I, I don't know. I don't really have an opinion and i i don't really kind of i don't know to me it's just not worth me worrying about it (laughs) i I, i've spent so much time in my life worried sick about things like that that i just realized it's not worth it it's just like i gotta carry on i gotta make a good show and uh and i gotta deliver on 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 the content and on the story and as far as i know you know i mean i i have my my roster when i come back to do season four for Mm -hmm. which underground unless they fire me for Interview. Well, I was right. just about to ask I, I, you. Thank you for answering that question, Chris. When season four begins, very nice of you to clarify that for me. Now I don't have to worry about whether that's coming. That's the journalist. At, at, at I have there. an important question about a potential season four. Okay. An important question: If the Hardys decide to continue their expedition of gold to say Lucha Underground, would you allow Vanguard One? as their third tag team partner. Of course. I mean, I love Vanguard 1. So <laughs> I love Vanguard 1 and I love Senior Benjamin. So either one could probably be the third man. Maybe I'd let them have a have a have like a uh, a four bird rule where like any of them could, uh, you know, say like, oh. like any of them could compete. I love that is, that is music to my ears. I would probably music write in my the ears. script Vanguard 1 over Strong. <laughs> yes. Yes. I all right, all right. My goal for twenty seventeen is to see someone pinned by a drone. How really would you feel about a, a Vanguard toy, but you know. How how would you feel about a hypothetical matchup between uh Vanguard one and Aerostar? I mean, I, I mean we're dealing with teleportation powers now, you know. <laughs> it would have to happen in space. <laughs> that's probably oh. the only way I'd do it. <laughs> shoot it on green screen and have a space battle you know? <laughs> I, what does that do to, to your budget <laughs> at that point green screen very inexpensive entire, it'll be fine it would probably be the, the entire season's budget on one match I mean you're already like have to go shoot stuff out in the desert and, and, and all this stuff and and, <laughs> and you're gonna have to get like a, like a space suit for Dario Cueto so you can just be floating there you know and <laughs> That'd be awesome. But Dario's in a spaceship, maybe watching like like Darth Vader, and then Marty Elias is in a space suit floating around. I feel oh like God. I feel like Dario Cueto would wear the space suit, but without a helmet, because he's like, I can breathe in space. Of course I can. I'm Dario Cueto. Oh yeah, oh, for sure. I guarantee it. Yeah. You know, see, he's doing different. it again. He's tricking us into giving him ideas again. Just, hey, I can't I, just keep I, I, vision. I love violence in space. I you love violence and space. Every idea. Chris, every idea we give you is free. Yes, yeah, absolutely. We love Lucha Underground so much. We charge Vince. Because <laughs> we know he watches as Kayfabe hey, is uh, to mentioned. To be fair, they stole the Hype Bros from me. They did. They did. <laughs> They, they, I actually named and at least two of our Mayhem Mania matches. All, all right. Is. Speaking yeah, of sure. ideas, speaking of, guys, speaking of ideas, the yes. chat room is amazing right now. By all the right. way, because <laughs> we hold on, I got I got to roll back here a little bit because we were going into the whole crossover universe, and of course, like WWE is doing like WWE meets meets the Jetsons and and Scooby Doo and everything like that. So we're trying to figure out like what other shared universes Lucha Underground could go in. Uh, first of all, Chris um, um, Garza says uh, no. Lucha Underground should be definitely in the Samurai Samurai Jack universe. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That fits. That fits. Uh, yeah. uh, Worldwide Underground versus the Venture Brothers was suggested as well. Uh, maybe a. I'd rather see World. I don't know why. I'd rather see a Worldwide Underground versus the Scooby Doo Mystery, like Mystery Inc. Yeah. I don't yeah. know why. I can see I that. I think I just want to see. I think I just want to see Jack Evans versus Fred. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I've had vodka. That's, this why. Is, this <laughs> that's, that's why. That's why. No, no, yeah, we found yeah, the reason. That's basically it. That's why. Okay, um, 
Uh, Brandon says uh, the, the Ninja Turtle universe. I think that's ready made with the nunch cat, nun, nunchuck matches you've already had. Oh, that'd be amazing. <laughs> that would be amazing. Um, or hell, you could even do a live action with those suits from the movie well, in the Drago, 80s. Drago, Phoenix, Aerostar, and we would need a fourth to go against all four turtles. Probably Pentagon Dark to go against Raphael. That just makes sense. Yeah, sure. I mean, the World Wide Underground could also fight the Ninja Turtles since they're baby faces. <laughs> and, uh, you know, maybe uh, maybe we could have, like, an appearance by Krang or something there like you that. You know, there you go. And, and, and it's Can not... We have w- would you Krang would you force Splinter to be in a shark in the cage for oh, the match? Or oh. would you... You know, <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe a Genghis frog run in something like that. We can have Cage have Masquerita Sagrada taped to his waist and have that fight Krang. Oh, that would be so sweet. <laughs> is this the least serious? Wait, wait, is this the least serious interview you've had on Leash Underground yet? <laughs> yeah, and then, and then we could bring in Master Blaster from Thunderdome, and they could do like a triple. <laughs> This isn't an interview anymore. This is a <laughs> no, 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 yeah, it's just, it, 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 <laughs> this is this is more just a, 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 a strategy session for yeah, season yeah. four of Lucha Underground. You know what? We we don't like to be the regular interviews, and I hope we succeeded. So, uh, Bobby also says more ideas well, pouring in. We, we definitely steered clear of the hard hitting questions that were <laughs> so we, we're di- we've diverted. That one didn't feel right, so we just went on to something different. Um, but. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, Bob- Bobby says Vanguard One becomes a real boy and becomes a robot luchador. <laughs> <gasps> oh my God! Well, hold on, hold on. Where is um, El Mariachi Loco? I'm sure he needs a new gimmick. Yeah, where back is he? The restaurant. <laughs> he is. In fact, he had a job at a rest- at a Mexican restaurant, if you recall. <laughs> he did, he did. I'm sure oh. Vanguard One did too. I remember yeah. that well, now. That's yeah, yeah. That's where Dario found. He discovered him at his favorite Mexican restaurant. <laughs> I actually <laughs> just watched that episode again. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's probably geez. taking. He's yeah, probably playing his trumpet. Oh, uh, hold on. I do have a question for you guys. Sure. Uh, I was watching the second episode again. When was the decision? Because Matt Stryker referenced a backstage segment. A, excuse me, a backstage segment. He said he said that that Katrina licked. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, I, I don't I don't know if we how we missed that or that, that I think that decision came like right in like the probably close to like episode five or six when I just it just didn't feel right for them to know what was totally okay. Okay. I think that's only the only minor real minor slip that happens where he knew that something happened yeah because I, I was watching it back yeah I'm like Wait a minute, Stryker just referenced something that we saw? That's no, I was going to say, maybe he really just weird. heard about it. Maybe he just heard about it. From yeah, because I, I, re- I actually rewound <laughs> to see if I missed something. Yeah, I yeah. caught that last night, too. I was like, shit. <laughs> oh. Well, the beginning of that season one, Chris, was pretty chaotic, wasn't it? If I Oh, yeah. I mean, the those first, first nine were, were super chaotic. And, and, and you know, you're, 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 we're trying to uh, – there's a lot of people who wanted certain things and you're trying to find a balance between all these different important people that want to help decide what the show is and you're trying to satisfy everybody. So, mm-hmm. you know, I think we're, I think I would like to say that those first four, those first nine are really kind of us, you know, discovering who we are and, and, and what we can, what we're capable of. I mean, you look, we have cameramen that are standing on the aprons I was like, I was. That was one thing that I was not a fan of, <laughs> and uh, you know, eventually we figured out that it changed because you know it's kind of gotten in the way of some of the talent. Sure, it looked a lot different, and it was a different uh, take on things. But yeah, I mean, there are lots of little changes and tweaks. But you know, like like the uh, the camera at the ringside desk, where it showed the awkward angle of Matt Stryker and Vampiro. Yeah, yeah, the thing got knocked <laughs> around. It was, yeah, it's like. You know, it's like it was like a lot of stuff. Like we were just learn. We met. They, you know, I, I was pretty much maybe. You know, me, Eric had done like Tough Enough and um, and uh, um, uh, Legends House, but I was really one of the only producers uh, besides like the other two guys that I was writing with Matt and Chris that 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 had actually produced television a wrestling television show before so mm-hmm. you know you're trying to explain to the best television production team in the world how wrestling works and you know it's it is it, it was everybody trying to find a balance and try to find out what works and try to develop our style 
And then I think as the season went on, we start to kind of hit our stride. We had different people coming in, different camera people. So we're really trying to find a team of, of everybody that kind of uh, worked together. So, uh, yeah, it was uh, – it was a, it, it, if I could take back and go back to those days, it was it was really interesting. I mean, we didn't know if it was going to make it past the first eight or nine episodes. I remember we shot eight, and I was like, I sure hope we get to Aztec Warfare and we can crown a champion because if not, <laughs> you know, well, it's cool. Like we, I really didn't know. Uh, so, um, you know, plus we had we had travel issues and visa issues, and uh, you know, the list goes on and on. But those are the kind of the troubles of starting. Uh, you know, starting this kind of TV show from scratch, and and now I think we've kind of hit our stride, and we're real pros at it. And I think we'll continue to do more and more uh, better and better stuff. So yeah, the first episode looks completely different from like the season three stuff that we've been seeing. Yeah, there's Good nobody more. on the floor. Mm-hmm. There's nobody on the floor. There's oh my no- god! Seeing how empty that arena that the, the, <laughs> the temple was, I'm like, where are the believers? Like, yeah, I can dude. see concrete. So- what is going on? We had to like beg. We had to like beg friends to come. You know, yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. That. So, so Mike, Mike, I went and restarted yet again from episode one after visiting the temple, and it was startling. You know, yeah. after you have context and everything like that. Uh, Matt, you got a question? Shoot, what was I going to ask? Oh, okay, <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> I got mesmerized. Um, I, I remember when we were doing the midweek war. Um, during those first like eight or nine episodes of Lucha Underground, before there were even even talk about crowning a champion, and we were talking about how refreshing it was that that Lucha Underground appeared to be a show that was not about championships at all, at least for those first you know handful <laughs> of episodes. Was that ever like something that was in your mind? Like maybe we just won't have any belts at all, um, or was it always kind of in the cards that we're going to do Aztec Warfare, we're going to crown well, champion? I, I Obviously, it's worked I, out for the best, but. <laughs> I think we certainly thought about it, but you know, the more we looked at it, it was like at some point we have to have a champion, and there has to be something that they're fighting for just besides money all the time. Yeah. Uh, and um, so we, when we were kind of developing it and thinking about it, we we knew we just didn't want to crown a champion the first night because that seems like that's what everybody would do. Yeah. And uh, you know, we wanted to help establish who the characters were and uh, and and really kind of get that out there and we thought that uh you know uh, the briefcase storyline is kind of um a way to set stakes right off the bat and kind of show that you know what kind of person and what kind of player this dario cueto guy was who had this 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 underground fight club especially since you call that back eventually yeah, we did. Like, yeah. he gets a long con on that but that eventually comes back around sorg you're not there yet so i'm not gonna spoil it for you but that briefcase with the hundred grand comes back around, and it's amazing oh, how geez. that happens. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm at the point where okay, I'm not going to spoil, but the the thing that happens in the last scene of season two, and I'm like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm watching this like like two nights ago at like two in the morning. I'm just like, what? Are you serious? <laughs> So, Sir was distraught. I was distraught. Sir. I was more distraught over what happens to somebody else. Uh, I, 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 okay. So as I've gone through my my re review of the entire two seasons over the few months here of, of Lucha Underground, um, watching the plight of Mister Cisco is one of the most fascinating things for me. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know if you've seen my tweets on the Mayhem Show account about, I mean, where he goes, you know, seeing the pain in his face, and it seems like everything is coming around, and then all of a sudden, just this 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 utter betrayal and and bull happens, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I mean, it just, uh, it, that, that is, I don't know, Mr. Cisco is the character I resonated with in this, in this show. I Wow. I've always loved the fact that you so understand. Matt Stryker became a big Mr. Cisco fan. Yeah, yeah. I, I went on the ride with <laughs> Matt. I think I, with that. Right. Like, I, I tell you what, Vampiro, Mr. Night. Cisco looks great tonight. I, I tweeted about this a little bit last night. Mr. Cisco is Lucha Underground's D'Lo Brown. <laughs> you know, and, and I don't mean that as a dig in any sense, but he's always the kind of guy that you notice. Like, regardless of what he's doing, you notice what he's doing. And he's very good at what he's doing, but he knows he's in the background. <laughs> I mean, he's, 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 he knows he's the background guy. 
I mean, the, the guy who it is, the performer, I mean, he he is uh, he's super talented, and that was part of the reason why he came came on, onto the show. Uh, his ability to play that heel character, then when you see him fire up as a baby face and start doing lucha moves, it's like, oh yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> I love Mister Cisco. You're you looking know? at the real deal now. Yeah, but you can hate him just as <laughs> much. I mean, you almost kind of like him though because Mister Cisco, he, he has some balls a little bit. You know, he burned mm-hmm. Big Rick's eye out. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know. He just wants to to be a part of something, I think. And unfortunately, uh, yeah, he he got crossed up, cro- cross paths with the wrong people. Uh, we we established, uh, you know, there are you know there are deaths in this show, right? Um, there <laughs> there are impermanent deaths sometimes too. Just like any Netflix show, sort exactly, exactly. Is is like I feel like is this the only wrestling show that has that Walking Dead type mentality when people get a script of Oh God, I hope I don't get bumped off in this one. <laughs> uh yeah I'm, I'm sure nobody has really ever approached me like oh i hope i'm not dying but you know I, I, you gotta think that they're thinking it yeah. you know i hope i'm not thinking, i hope i'm not gonna die or if i do die i hope i'm around katrina or somebody who's right. gonna bring me back to life <laughs> right 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 like, like some infinity stones or something yeah, going yeah. On. otherwise you know otherwise i'm probably in some trouble like, like mm-hmm. usually if you're gonna die from the quato family i don't think I don't think anybody's come back from the Quato family killing. No, 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 no. Like, like, like you see, like the the the. Oh, except for Mill. Except for Mill. Except for Mill, well, of course. That's but, because Mill always comes back. Right. But like when they see the the versus Matanza on the sheet, they're like, "Oh no, is this a death scene?" <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, it, it seems like the a best, real concern. The best part is, is though, like you know, the fun part about doing the show is that not even the talent sometimes know what the other characters are doing because. You know, we shoot all those scenes on different days, and 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 nobody really knows what's what. I, like in a way, um, you know, my team has the only people who kind of see the entire puzzle, you mm-hmm. know, put together. So the wrestlers so, can so enjoy the show. Uh, I, I have a I have a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I was watching the first episode again with the main event being uh, Puma versus Mundo. Yes, Matt Striker made a reference to them being able to go all night long. Yes, is yeah. that was that a tease? For the eventual all night long match, or was that just a happy coincidence? Well, I think that's a little bit of love for Lionel Richie, and then and uh, and Puma coming out with Rich Rich Swan to all night long and stuff like that. So uh, that's kind of how that how we gave a little love to all night long. Plus, I think we were in a Lionel kind of mood that day, and it was like you know <laughs> that um, that's part of the reason why that's part of the reason why all night long is named all night long. All night long. <laughs> we, we, we I remember when that was first announced. I posted so many gifts as all night love the all night mm-hmm. long. Yeah, it's, it's kind of a tip to the hat to to to, to Rich Swan and and and, and uh, Ricochet and and to Lionel. We we have a very important question from Bobby F J Town in the chat room. Will Ooh, yes. Will Mill Mortez get new pants this season? <laughs> which which season? I don't, season I don't know. I, I think he means season three. Does he does he get new pants every time he dies? Is it, or was it? Well, no, no, no. He, he had. Well, yeah. Well, the first time he died, he had uh, he had pajama pants. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Then, then he went. Then he went to all black, and then he started getting like uh, skulls on them and stuff like that. So, okay. uh, I don't think Mill will change his pants. Which, his eyes will, will, will have seemed to have changed a few times, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe something will change about him if he dies again. I don't know if he will though. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. That's a hint. Oh, uh, why is isn't it the end of May yeah. yet? <laughs> well, yeah, seriously. Back to the screen Don't grabs. About it. I'm, I'm like, it's killing me too. The red <laughs> contacts. That's right. The red contacts. So, yeah. thanks, Bob, for that. So, all right. Well, um, I guess I guess you know. So, well, I, oh, hold on, Chris. Oh, go ahead, I have go a question. Ahead. I, I, <laughs> I have a question. I got a good closer, I think. But if there was one episode, yeah. Um, besides the first one. Yeah. That like because a lot of people like if if someone's trying to get their friends into Doctor Who, they oh, point to certain right. episodes. They, no, no, I'm serious. They point to certain episodes, like Blink or something like that. Yeah. If there was one episode you could point to to get people into Lucha Underground so they could start from the beginning, what episode do you think that would be? Would, would it be the beginning? It can't be the beginning, right? Yeah, it can't, can't be, be the beginning. Can't be the beginning. Aztec, Aztec Warfare for sure. I think because that's okay. the next. 
uh, you know, we, we kind of look at the show in cycles, and, and you know, rather than building the pay per views, we're kind of building cycles. That's why sometimes you'll see storylines build, and we're like, oh, when's this going? When's this going? And then all of a sudden, it's like, oh, shit, we have all these matches happening at one time. It's like, in a way, we're building cycles and building feuds to get to big blow off tent poles. So I would say that's probably the first, uh, the first big tent pole. And I think, you know, you crown a, a champion. You kind of still see Mundo and Johnny's relationship. You get to see all these other storylines kind of culminating, and I think you can. That's a good kickoff point for sure. Okay, yeah, because we have a few people in the chat room saying like grave consequences. Grave consequences. Sure, I think grave consequences might be a little bit too late because you kind of miss the Mill and Phoenix and Katrina dynamic, and okay. I think there's other stuff that's happening. But for me. You know, plus plus you've got right after Aztec Warfare, you've got Cage showing up and Cage ripping up the belt, and you that's know true. I think that 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 really kicks off the main. You know, you know that's that's kind of once the 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 water main breaks. It was from the chat room, Tina saying, uh, "Well, I won't say who, so not to spoil, but the first death episode." Uh, the, the the member of the crew. The member of the crew. Oh, yes. Awesome. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know if that's the best tipping off point, but that's it's definitely awesome. I, I don't think that's a good. I like it's the, a good indicator that this is prelude something to that moment. Yeah, is, is yeah, a bit better. I like. Yeah, I think you. Want, I think you want to build to the death. You know, you want to wait and, and then be like shocked by it. I like the episode <laughs> where um, Alberto El Patron debuts. Frostboy is like a one A, Tastec Warfare, just because it's a good for more mainstream fans to see him get in for there, sure. and he does have such a strong. He starts so strong that it's. Uh, it's fun to watch that. And we do get to uh, enjoy that scene where he asks um, Dario about his key and Dario ignores him, which is yes. one of oh, my God. all-time I remember favorite. The first season, Dario I was so Quato curious about scenes. that fucking key. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, every week I was like, what does that, once I realized he was wearing a key, I was like, what does that key open? We need to fucking know about what that One giant key. key. <laughs> uh, that's a spoiler sorry sword one giant i think we did a good oh, job not spoiling anything yeah yeah a little 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 like if you haven't missed it there's a lot of uh, shades in there so awesome well since mike took my last big question uh, <laughs> <laughs> thanks mike um, i'm sorry sorg <laughs> so um uh so so what do we give us give us some little uh, uh what you can what do we have to expect here uh coming up uh, of course the second part of season three is coming we're in we're in a mid-season break which is painful to all of the Lucha underground fans oh, out God. there right now it, so. it hurts every yeah. day yeah. netflix will help yes yeah, yes. yeah i think netflix will help ease some of that pain but uh yeah for sure i feel the pain too and and Waiting like it seems forever, but I will say that when it does arrive, um, the, the first show back is maybe one of my favorites of all time. Um, and uh, and I, 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 the the action and and the things that are going to happen are crazy. There's uh, Dario Cueto comes up with some new original concepts, never before done before, of course. Uh, Yay! And in, in Senior Cueto's mind. Uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, is it a coal miner's glove match that's my favorite thing about dario is that, that we do is like, like the favorite joke is like any gimmick that's it's a, it's his original idea <laughs> so um so that's fun um there are lots of twists of course and turns um there are more deaths uh there are um uh and probably some of the craziest, most violent things you've ever seen on television. Now, now the the craziest violent things does that have to do with Kill Shot and AR Fox? Possibly. Yay! <laughs> Yay! 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 <laughs> but there's that's not the only one. So uh, just I'm so uh, excited. Yeah, I, I'm yeah. still, and again, you know, haven't been there for for the tapings last year. Um, I I still have like I was as I was finishing season two. I'm still like thinking back to like I have still have no idea any context to anything I saw. Uh, out there, so I'm looking forward to see. A, see a lot of the people, well. a lot of people who were in the audience had no idea either because yeah, I took we took season three and we pretty much shot everything out of order and mixed a lot of things up so that I, nobody really. I got me. the impression. I, I the hint <laughs> the hint was Melissa's uh, costume changes. 
So yeah, <laughs> she changed. She probably went to one where she changed like five times. Yes, you know? yes, because it was yeah. that it was that Sunday. I think it was the month before Ultima Lucha, and it was just like, huh, you know, like like we did like a match and then she changed, and then we did like two and she changed. I'm like, what's happening here? And I, I, yep. I, I think there was a tournament going on or something. So yeah, no. I am still so jealous of Sword that he got to go to the temple. <laughs> yeah, I think he had a good time, right? Yes. So with that, thank you. Check out uh, uh, if you tell your friends about Lucha Underground on Netflix. Show them, force feed it to them. Okay, maybe not that. Tape their eyelids yeah, open. No, no, no. Sorg, force feed it to them. Force yes. feed to and, them. And, and, force and, feed them the first episode and watch it again. Watch it yes, again. Yeah. Just leave it on. Put it on every iPad, iPhone, whatever. As many as you're, you're five stars. Yeah, everything. Five stars all the yes. time. Don't Amy Schumer right. this thing. Um, right comments. This is amazing. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That. Best thing ever. Please watch the midweek war. To put that in the Netflix. Hey, that's hey, cool Chris too. Chris Joseph, even more money. Yes. All those things. Yes. <laughs> These must be the highest paid writers in Hollywood, in wrestling. Absolutely. Please have a Christmas episode, all of that stuff. I think he needs to budget for Actually, you know what? Staff have a Thanksgiving episode. Coast. I think that'd be a good thing. Have a Thanksgiving episode. <laughs> have a Thanksgiving episode because not a lot of shows do that. Can Pentagon play golf? All that <laughs> yeah, stuff. there you go. Just <laughs> copy and paste everything from our chat room and leave them as a comment on Netflix. And watch the internet <laughs> melt. Um, let's 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 memeify these things. Thank you so much, Chris. So of course, last night, uh, SmackDown. Uh, it was here in Pittsburgh, two hundred five live, uh, and, and and everything. And and I love that this is like the first time in a while we've been excited by a SmackDown coming to our. I was like, oh, we got SmackDown. I got to come down on a Tuesday for this crap, you know. Uh, but of course, it was it was it was pretty. It was it was a little different. Of course, we got a couple people here that were a part of it. Although one just took a stroll, and she's the one with the notes. Uh, but first, I, I you know, first of all, Matt. <laughs> yeah. You. you <laughs> as seen on SmackDown. As seen live. on SmackDown Live. As, as seen on SmackDown Live. Very prominently throughout the night. Why are you taking a picture of it? Oh, I'm is a this an inappropriate now. place to take a uh, paparazzi photo? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Larry. Larry knows Matt's a celebrity now. Sorry, <laughs> exactly. Sorry. Like, well, sending so, this to TMZ. Well, let's not get carried away. I'm not Brock Lesnar guy or anything like that. No, but. no, no. You never know. But the pictures were amazing. I'm gonna try to pull them up here for you guys on the video. Wait, Matt. Matt, if you were a a, a known fan in the crowd, what would your name be? Uh, Canadian Goldberg. I don't know. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I, I just want to, Sorg, I want to apologize. If I had known that the camera was going to basically frame me between the Miz and Maurice during that segment, I would have worn a Wrestling Mayhem Show t-shirt, but I had to support yeah. Styles. Way to man. go. Way to go. Way to, way way to, to go. fail. We can shop it way in. Way to fail, post. Mr. We'll Mainstream. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know how this rolls. You know what you're supposed to be doing here. Um, and it was it, and, and the videos of I don't want to show the video because we'll get we'll get tagged on the YouTube's and everything. But uh, <laughs> what was it? There are some screen grabs Jen, floating out there. Jen Jen said uh, uh, um, well, the first image I got was this one coming up here where uh, she said it's all fun and games until your <laughs> until the one from her mom until your mom screen caps yeah! you on television. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> It, Jen's face in that screen grab is amazing. It, it's it's like it she's thumb she's mid thumbs down, mouth open. Ah! We're, we're giving title. Ms. and Maurice the thumbs like, down, but deep down we love them both. So. I think is that the do I see the top and bottom of your head behind somebody's arm? Oh, that's Jen's arm actually. Yeah, so. Isn't it basically Jen's reaction to every segment that doesn't involve Dean Ambrose? <laughs> I gotta tell you, as usual, that there were Dean Ambrose soccer moms. Everywhere, <laughs> that section. our section was awesome. Um, but uh, oh my god, it's weird, Sorg. I mean, once you know that the camera is like pointing right at you on live television, you're just kind of like, you're kind of like, and Daniel Bryan's out, and Cena's in the ring, and the Miz is right in front of you, and all you can do is just like, all right, just keep moving, don't look like an idiot. So I'm just like turning my head, you know, following it. There's Cena. Okay, I'm gonna look at the Miz. Look, Brian. Look at Cena. Look at Miz. Look. Oh no. Yes. No. Yeah. You know, just. <laughs> Jeez, a Wait, thing. Which one of you posted all those pictures? Was it was it on hers or Jen? Is it, it on, hers? on Jen? Hold on a second, because I, I think I, I, oh no, because Jen Carlin's um this, this is a known wrestling mayhem show fact. Jen Carlin takes upwards of three thousand pictures per yeah, wrestling pretty show. much, and they kick ass. <laughs> 
She's got oh, some they great all kick on ass. Show. Yeah, but there is there is a good Googleplex of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. Much. There is a lot. Um, I, I love when she zooms across the arena to where we're sitting too, and, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, and it's a, and she can pick us out of the entire. Audience. And it's a great picture. It's just like, <laughs> holy crap! How do you? Uh, yeah, she she brings that. It, you see that a lot. I mean, you got been live show. You see the person with like the telephoto lens taking stuff. You know, it's uh, I, oh, I love the snipe shot of Corey Graves here too. Yeah, it's pretty uh, good too. That, that's that's home. Throw that up for you guys on the video um right right across Did, oh um you guys didn't get to hear us because you watched 205 live uh live mm-hmm. Corey uh-huh. graves totally threw out for manti shout outs yeah oh yeah <laughs> uh, 205 live he had i oh i think he said he was gonna take drew gulak to permanis afterwards oh, that's, yeah. that's nice well, they were, right well, did you guys see talking smack they were like i love this town i love going through the tunnel and and eating yeah. jimmy john's and like renee Ray, nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. listen listen there's a reason. To... No, somebody's no. getting another tweet on talking mayhem mania. That, that's, that, 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 that's right. That's right. Uh, uh, they ain't. Gotta get the permanents. Gotta get the fries and the coleslaw. Jimmy John's. Come on. Listen to the road dog. Listen to the ro- the road dog yes. knows. Road the road dog, dog knows. knows. The writing team knows. They went to the permanents afterwards. We talked about them on Twitter. Get with it, Nene. Get with it. Get some permanents. You're welcome. You're welcome. You are welcome. So we're sitting on the floor at a, at a live wrestling show. And it really doesn't matter what kind of wrestling show you're at. We were front row at PWX here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> but when you're that close, the energy is so good. And uh, it's so much fun, like, just shouting. I mean, I think I gave a nice uh, let's go pens to uh, Drew Gulak, the Philadelphia native, as he was walking by. There was um, a flyer <laughs> suck that came to, up. Between, yeah. you know, flyer suck, cheesesteak sucks, trying to figure out what, exactly how I was going to mock him. Uh, we got to do an amazing shouting match with Tony Nese after he got eliminated from the five-way elimination match um, because uh, he tapped out mere moments after he went barreling through that uh, barricade. So he's going back up the uh, ramp, and one of the fans is yelling at him. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they had that too. Um, <laughs> the face, like, the so, oh, no, you didn't face oh, no, between I, Miz and oh. Maurice. This is the point where I think Daniel Bryan is talking about punching people in the face. So, yeah, the mm. Our section is just like, oh, no, you know, and it's all, it's all good. It's just everyone was overreacting and having some really, really good times down there. Um, and, and, and but, but getting back to Tony Nice real quick, this he barrels through that barricade. He taps out like a minute later, and now it's way back up the ramp. Somebody's like, um, you know, you know, good job tapping out, or you know, you suck, you tapped out, Tony. And he's like, yeah, screw you. But I'm like, hey, but good job killing that barricade, Tony. He's like, oh, you know what? Screw you, too. Don't kill that barricade. Um, it's so much fun being that close. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, uh, and, of course, uh, Larry, you, 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 got to see, um, you got to see 205 Live live in yeah. person. You are a huge fan of 205 Woo. Live. That you have to watch during this show usually when we're on yeah. Tuesdays. What were your impressions uh, uh, seeing it in person? Man, we, I, of course, not as close. We were up in low seating, so yeah. But y- you know what? It the energy was there. Like it, it was awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. And getting to see um, gentleman Jack Gallagher uh, mm-hmm. do his hip hop. That alone was worth it. I, I don't that, watch that Two Five Live segment. every week, but I felt like that was like an A plus effort. For that, 205 that was I a felt like they really good everyone show they had on that show yeah mm-hmm. yeah uh, uh mike how did that show come off uh we'll talk about of course more on the middle week war when we record tomorrow which is weird um but uh you know what what were your initial impressions of 205 live like uh on, I, on TV? I was honestly i was honestly just jealous that you guys got to see that episode of 205 live because i thought that was a really good episode mm-hmm. i thought that was really really good i mean i haven't seen nxc yet so don't know where it's going to go in the rankings and of course haven't seen Impact, not that that usually matters, but you know, <laughs> it was a really fun episode. You guys get to see a fatal five way elimination match. I think I mean, that, that match alone I mean, puts it in the Fuck one. you. Seriously, that was <laughs> a got, good match. You got to see Austin Aries, the, the culmination of what, however long Austin Aries' in the ring career has been, like at least almost 20 years, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been at it for a while. Mm-hmm. And to, to see him, you know, I mean, I know it was a big deal to him because I'm um, tweet about it um, uh, last night. Um, yeah, we got to see Austin Aries, you know, and, and the crowd was with him all the way. It was awesome. Yep. Sure, there were some seven-year-olds chanting for T.J. Perkins, but we shouted them down, and we took care of them in short order. Oh, my God. 
The kids love TJP. The, ki- the kid, you know what? The kids love Rich Swan more. Yeah, they do. Oh, oh yeah. my God, there were so many kids dancing. So, so, <laughs> so they many. can handle that. They yeah, can handle that. I think they can. They were attempting to. They were attempting to. I'm trying to find the picture, but of course, also a friend of the show, Facade. Made on yeah, TV. Yeah, Facade had a little cameo. Yeah, I got to chat with him a little bit after the show about that. So good to see he's getting in there with. Uh, and I think he, he might have been in attendance at, at in Detroit too last night. Uh, uh, yes, from what he was like... saying. So so um, you no, know, cool to see that because I immediately like saw tweets of the screen caps of him hanging out. Uh, what's it was an interview segment in the back, right? He was backstage uh, with Carmella. Uh, and the coolest part about that wasn't just the fact that like I saw a facade in the background. I was like, oh my god, there's a facade. But literally, like there are like ten other people in our section who are like, is that facade? Is that facade? Is that facade? So mm-hmm. good on you, facade. The people know about you. So that was exciting. He's he's definitely one that sticks out, right? Which, yeah. You know, you for, don't really for, forget him once you see for him. better or worse. So <laughs> <laughs> Billy Billy says uh, nobody else sees impact y- either. By the way. Uh, so, kind of, and something very special in, in that vein coming from him in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but anyways, uh, and Tina's saying how the main show energy is is different from an NXT show. Like, it, it is it is a way different crowd. Um, and we even talked about last week because I did the, did those shows from was it FC Arena I think. Um, yeah. The, the, like for the the latest episodes, and even that is just not great. I, I, I'm starting to feel like I think 205 does well in front of the crowd, and you do see a lot of people leave after SmackDown. But the people that stay are the people that want to be there and are into it, you know. It I was going to say, did you guys get anything after 205 Live? Oh, we did. We, did. we, we got uh, Dean Ambrose against uh, Baron Corbin. Yeah. So, oh, so Jen, so Jen was happy she stayed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. <laughs> but so. All I was doing was scream. I was like, you're supposed to be in the hospital. What are you doing here? <laughs> there didn't seem yeah. like there was a terribly uh, large amount of people that left after SmackDown was over. I wonder if there's more people getting drinks, that, that, to be that's honest. That's what I'm thinking. Because, yeah. like. The crowd, like, even, I mean, it was mostly the lower bowl section, but the crowd was full. It was pretty full, you know? I, I think that probably had a lot to do with the main event for 205 Live. Mm-hmm. I think If it would have well, been a run in the middle of 205 Pittsburgh, Live, I think you would have seen a little bit more excess. But knowing that that was the match that was going to mm-hmm. decide who was going to face Neville, and I think the writing was on the wall for what the outcome was going to be, wonder- I think that kept a lot of people in the stands. I'm wondering if that's why they put the fireworks in there too it's like oh hey there's more yeah you know <laughs> it no. is a pretty big wrestling <laughs> town though yeah yeah um and, and there was some angle chance of course and of course the oh reports came up about there, there there was a whole section uh um um near us that was that was a chant and it said uh, you know and we know angle was at the arena yeah, was, yeah. But, uh, it was mentioned on <laughs> talking smack that they, they were doing something called a 360 interview with daniel bryan and, and angle who have never met before yeah. apparently uh, for those guys on video, here's a shot on on Facade's Facebook of him hanging out in the back. Uh, <laughs> what did they say? They were talking about basketball or something. <laughs> <laughs> back well, they were there, talking so. about hockey. <laughs> hockey was yeah, it? They were talking yeah. about the Penguins. Yeah, so that was that was pretty good. So good to see that he's getting around there and uh, you know like, getting people's attention at least, right? Yeah. So, um, but no, it was uh, good. I, I, you know, most I, I always enjoy a show like that. Yeah, I, I was joking earlier. I think you you tweeted Matt about uh, hey, this is what. This is who 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 Sorg came to see in a picture of the cameraman, which <laughs> yeah. typically is the case. Um, it wasn't last night. Maybe it's just because I was watching the screen half the night with some all the promos. But uh, <laughs> but but seriously, it was you know a little bit of uh, I'm enjoying the show more, and I think that's a testament between this, the last pay per view, even the Raw before that. We've had three really good shows come to Pittsburgh um, in, in in the last little bit, and uh, it, it, I've. I don't come to watch the production monkeys anymore. Yeah. Although it is great to see them set up for 205 Live and change the ring. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, what, a, what a fire draw that was. Wow. That was great. <clears throat> and, 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 and I thought I, I suspected this because I remember catching like a glimpse of it. Like how much how how they must um, work the show. All right. Make sure we have a so-and-so long promo to give them time. Make sure you do this. Uh, you know, let's have Neville come out and talk on the ramp so so we can finish setting up the ring and everything like that. Like that coordination that needs to happen between production. Is, yeah, I they were like a really NASCAR impressive. pit crew. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, <clears throat> and to see that they are taping the ropes is, yeah. is pretty incredible. And I, think this I is, thought they replaced the ropes, but no, they, were, yeah, yeah, they just yeah. taped right over them. I mean, there, there's like an easy tape where it like runs along and they wrap it around like like it's it's fitted mm-hmm. like a little bit, but it's still tape and they're doing it. And at least like they don't have to like redo it 
like two times they'd a probably night. just take it off they probably just rip it right off mm-hmm. yeah. I, it's absurd that they go to all that trouble but nothing but respect mm-hmm. Absolutely. So it's just amazing yeah. to watch those guys in action have like 20 guys working on the ring for an hour show yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. But but that's how that's how important that is to have for them to have that content on um on on the network that they'll put that much into it. I think it's pretty great. You know, it shows how important that is. It, it surprised me that they were doing that for, you know, hey, more people watch that than they did main event, right? So to replace that, that makes absolute sense. Yeah, absolute sense. Mm-hmm. So um, I thought it was interesting. We got a dark match. Like yeah. Before. Oh yeah. That was no a cameras. Great dark match. No cameras. Even if you looked at the screen, you saw the the, the hard cam like zooming in and out and preparing and, and like testing everything <laughs> during it. Um, which was um uh Rhino and and Heath Slater against uh the Fashion Police. Fashion Police. Which excited for that. Always excited to see uh, Absolutely. Good. So, um, it was a good time. We're gonna get uh Raw apparently here in on July thirty first. That's right. So we the, it's good to see that we have made up. For the Batista incident. And the it, Roman Reigns incident. It, it, no, that was justified. No, that was that was Philly. <laughs> that was Philly with oh, Roman Reigns. Oh, that was Philly. Okay. Yeah, bad, no, 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 no. We wanted no, we're, Roman we're Reigns. The ones, we're the ones who that's right, that's booed right. Batista. I, I confused. I confused. We're the ones who booed Rey Mysterio. Randy and Cena. R- Randy we're and we're and the Cena. ones who chanted, we want divas during Randy and Cena. <laughs> It was a dark. It was a rough not, night. Not, was, not our finest moment. It <laughs> was. It was. We uh, last night of CM Punk. I mean, man, yeah. what a night that was. Sorry, and James Ellsworth returning to the scene of his debut, <laughs> the scene of the crime. His debut was when he got uh, obliterated by Braun Strowman That's at that right. Raw. That was Ellsworth's uh, debut. That's and look right. at him now. Yep. Yeah. Just fashion staple. Looking awesome. Yep. Man. <laughs> well. Guy. Uh, you can see pictures of, the, of a thread over the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook group. Uh, we have a few pictures from that event. <laughs> and, and if you're in audio and want to see uh, some great stills from uh, Jen and Matt's uh, reactions at ringside there, go check that out. <laughs> so I um, want to give a shout. Check out our friends, IndieWrestling.us. Support a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys, that, you know, it's always fun watching 205 Live and saying, yep, that guy was at Super Indie. That guy was at Super Indie. Like half the roster last night. There were a lot of them. Including Austin Aries, Rich Swan. Um, there was another one that was in that main event, too. I can't remember. Nice. Uh, nice was in, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so go check out. Nice has a great match with uh, AJ Styles from Meadville at one of the Night of the Superstars. I think three, maybe. Uh, that's tremendous to watch. And go check it out at IndieWrestling.us. A lot of other stuff. Support Indie Wrestling and support some friends of the show. We'll be right back after this with the big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. We are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show with us, of course, on the couch. Mainstream Matt, Larry the Mutilator, and Mad Mike at the Mouse Ears. And not that I've really introduced her, but she's been hanging out. She's been catching up with us. Wife of the show, Missy, is over there as well. Probably hear from her here in a little bit. But uh, it is time for the big question. And we were having so much fun with the interview, non-interview hangout session with Krista Joseph earlier. I thought uh, it seems like we're fairly creative. And I think as Mike is getting drunker through this episode, we're going to have some really great answers to this. Um, so Lucha Underground, I think, you know, we can say kind of revolutionized things with a very specific theme, uh, like, you know, with very theatrical, you know, uh, it, kind of, kind of call them interstitials, I guess, uh, around the wrestling action. So I want to propose to you guys. If you were starting a wrestling show that had a theme to it that you could do the Lucha Underground treatment to as far as production and and, and doing things that were very outside of the box, what would you do? Ooh, I like that question. I may have needed to give this to you in advance, but what would you do? I got an idea. Mm -hmm. Um, There's a... television series that ESPN ran back in the day. It was called Playmakers. Um, and it was a dramatic series based around a fictional football team, professional football team, kind of like the NFL. But it was kind of like the seedy underbelly of the NFL. You know, cheating the drug test, doing steroids, sleeping around, all these bad things happening. Let's go and do that with a wrestling show. Let's set it in like the early to mid-80s. And let's have all the terrible things happening around it. 
and just let those things play on, on camera too, wow. and then do the matches in the ring. Also, so do a like period that, piece. That. Does your does your does this lead to somebody overdosing in the ring in storyline? I'll, I'll try to be as tasteful as possible, but uh, I don't so know. this is like the office only in professional wrestling in the eighties. Maybe yeah, it's like the prequel to Beyond the Mat. <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That could be interesting. That could be really wow, interesting. I like that. Kind of, kind of. If I can take off of that, because what if you did one that was? I don't know how this play out, but it's like an indie show, right? Mm-hmm. But with all that backstage, like indie drama, yeah, along with it, yeah, could be one. Yeah, I mean, it's made for my hotel, okay. brother. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> Captain Albano's up next. Somebody go sober him up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Although, that might be what this uh, Southpaw Regional Wrestling on Network is going to be. So, maybe they <laughs> oh, already man. took that idea. That's, geez, that trailer. All right. Sorg, Sorg, I got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, I know Matt took this back to the 80s. Mm-hmm. I want to take this shit back to the 60s. <laughs> I want an actual traveling circus. Okay. And an actual because back in the day professional wrestling used to be a, a circus act. Uh, yeah. In, in the literal sense. Back in the fifties and sixties, it used to be a circus act. All the all the speak like kayfabe and everything that is is, is yes. carny speak, basically. Exactly. That's what I want. I want there to be like like everyone has their act in the ring, like there's a bearded lady, there's maybe a, a, a guy with no neck. Like mm-hmm. there, there's a bunch of different gimmicks going on, but there's also legitimate competition. And the backstage segments are things we see like, like I cheated on one head of the two headed woman with the other head of the two headed woman. I like. <laughs> you just want to do circus jokes. This is a big no, one. No, circus sword, jokes. Sword. <laughs> no, because all right, season four of Heroes mm-hmm. did something very similar to this. They did a circus that was full of superpowered individuals. I think you can do that, but with professional wrestling, and it's traveling. So you explain why it's in different venues every week. I think you'll be an interesting concept, and I think you'll be a way to do a very different style of wrestling program. I legitimately I like think this. I like it. I, I like the theme around it. I, I, I kind of dig that. Larry. I respectfully abstain. What? <laughs> I haven't seen I haven't seen Lucha yet. I have to download Netflix and catch oh, up on, on Lucha. Oh, okay. Well, so I, I don't have a, I don't well, have a frame you, of reference. If you wanted like this the to have a theme around a wrestling show. Yeah, I'm abstaining. I'm gonna pass this. Year. <laughs> I'm gonna pass this week. Well, we'll have to we'll have to catch you up with our yeah. lucha bingeathon idea that we have running here. So, um, well, uh, oh. Oh, 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 Missy's, Missy's got, one. got hold one. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me find her microphone. There it is. Uh, producer of the show, Missy. Hi, you big battle. <laughs> just the kaiju big, just a show. Just, just run a show with specific, like kind of like Power Rangers. Okay. But with Kaiju Big Battle Which is characters. kind of what Kaiju is. Exactly, yeah. but have a, more of a storyline with so it. So you just want Kaiju Big Battle, but with stage, like storyline, yes. backstage Yes, Power or, Rangers. Or back city um, yes. kind of thing. Yes. Okay. I'm okay with that answer. Midget that shows. sounds like Power an Rangers amazing response. I want to see Kaiju. Kaiju. Yes! Oh my god, yes. Wait, 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 hold on a second. Hold on a second. What, Larry, what is that? Midgets dressed as Power Rangers and the normal sized people dressed oh, as Kaiju. Oh, that's a great idea. Or Great Kali. Great yes. Kali. Great Kali. Is the super, super, super Kaiju. I, super Kaiju. I want to see Cage versus a giant octo- octopus man. I want to see Megazord versus a giant waffle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! And if you're I think the, we all want to see that. Awesome. No, yeah, 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 even yeah, yeah. better. Gobbledygooker <laughs> versus giant waffle. Hashtag chicken and waffles. Oh no! <laughs> By the way, if you're in Pittsburgh, and I know a lot of you guys are, Kaiju Big Battle is coming, and there's some great stuff around it. Like there's, there's a, a friend of ours is uh, apparently they're making they have they're making the buildings and putting stickers and, and designing them and stuff like in April here, even though the show is in like June, I'm so sad. Cause I'm going to be in freaking Nebraska or Kansas or something when, uh, for work, when, whenever this comes to town, so sad, missing it by like a day. Sork, but please go see it. Sork. We do have an answer for the big question in the chat room. We do. What is, uh, Oh, 
Okay. What what is it? No, uh, Tina wants just like old wrestling, O L D E wrestling, but broadcasted. Oh, absolutely. Um, ba- guys, this exists. Go on the network. Look up anything involving Texas wrestling. <laughs> I'm serious. It's from the 50s. So we could watch you're actually right there. actual old wrestling is what you're saying. Yes. Tina, Tina, um, go to the network. Look in, I believe it's in the collections. Yeah. If you look up in the collections, like um, old matches or, or weird one-off matches or something like that, they have stuff from Texas wrestling in the 1950s. It's amazing. It's it, it pretty fantastic. much the same thing. It's pretty much the same theme as what Aldi Wrestling is trying to go for, right? Yes. Okay. Yes, right. absolutely. And trust me, this is a guy who's watched a hell of a lot of Texas wrestling. Yes, he has. Mad Whoa. Mike has seen so much black and white wrestling, he couldn't see color for like... Yeah, that's right. I saw the first ever powerbomb. For, for, <laughs> as he comes about, no, no, this is a legit thing. Yep. We really think we saw the first ever powerbomb because it was... Um, Oh, Frank Gotch. He was trying for a pile driver, but the guy didn't keep his head tucked. So he sat up when the when Frank Gotch pulled him up for a pile driver and it looked into a really nasty I don't care if you die power bomb. Oh god. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Do some scenes from the Transformers movie, says Brandon. I, I think for that kaiju one. Um <laughs> That's awesome. So let us know what you think. Uh, your answer to the big question, what kind of Lucha Underground type theme would you like to uh, wrap around a wrestling show, basically? If you had the budget and the wrestlers and a soundstage, what would you do? So, <laughs> um, uh, But anyways, uh, uh, let's get into Mayhem Mania here with Matt Carlins. That's right. Mayhem Mania. Uh, we're trying to build a better WrestleMania card for everyone. Uh, the best WrestleMania card possible within the balance of this current reality in which we all live. Um, every week, uh, well, basically we're working on uh, eight matches that we're going to be able to bring our five people in this week. They're all going to make one change to the card. Um, and that card, hopefully, will continue to improve and improve over time. Um, one of the tricks of this whole thing is that if a match, uh, if one of those eight matches survives three rounds in a row without being changed in any way, it graduates to the super card. It gets locked in. Um, so we've already graduated three awesome matches, Sorg. Uh, so let's show those real quick before we get into the uh, eight matches on the quote-unquote undercard. Here's the super card right now as it stands. We got Brock Lesnar versus Kevin Owens, created by Jackson Argus. We've got uh, the American Alpha versus the Kings of Wrestling versus the Revival, uh, which was created by Bobby F. J. Town. And uh, finally, we have the Shield versus the New Day, uh, created by Mad Mike. So that's the super card. Uh, those three matches are locked in right now. Now we're going to take a look at the eight match, quote unquote, undercard. These are the eight matches that our five players will be making um, changes to here tonight. First, we have AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura, created by The Riz. Next up, we've got Charlotte versus Asuka, created by Bobby FJ Town. Followed by that, we have The Undertaker versus John Cena, created by Mad Mike. By the way, uh, I want to note the graphics uh, department had some fun with the titles. Oh, yeah, this. this is great. Gong <laughs> versus Rapadoo, <laughs> which is just a tremendous word to read. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Uh, we have Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho. That was created by our... Our good friend Sorgatron. Samoa Joe versus James Ellsworth versus Braun Strowman. Somebody going to die. That was created by Hot Wheels. We have Kane versus Finn Balor, created by our friend uh, Mutilator Larry. We have uh, a really a vintage women's match uh, booked here. Uh, Mickey James and Beth Phoenix versus Lay Cool, uh, created by uh, Missy, the wife of the show. And finally... Hold on to your butts, everybody. Bobby Roode and Eric Young and Austin Aries versus Grand Metalik and DIY versus Booker T and Scott Steiner and Kurt Angle. That's right. The main event mafia. Uh, that was created <laughs> by – oh, that's right, Chad, Chad the Shad. Shad. You're the man, Chad. Uh, so we've got eight matches. we got some moves that we need to pick. We've got five players. And, uh, Sorg, let's get uh, straight to our first player. That's right. First, uh, he's been uh, he's been hanging on the line the whole time, being quiet, 
writing down, uh, I, uh, fleshing out all those ideas we gave him early in the show. Uh, Chris DeJoseph, your picks. Can I? Oh, God, you guys are going to hate me for this. And mm-hmm. I'm not thinking about money drawing. I'm not thinking about money drawing. Okay, but let me ask if I can make this move. Mm-hmm. Can I take The Undertaker? Yes. And put him against Finn Balor and remove Kane. Yes, but that would mean Kane would be him. fighting John Cena. But that's fine. That's a legal move. Oh, oh I have to do that. Oh, yep. so I couldn't. I couldn't. But let me ask you this: Could uh, I couldn't? Oh, damn it! Man, shit! All right. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> you can do, let's just let's just do it, Chris. Let's swap. All right, I'm sorry. I'm taking the Undertaker out of the John Cena match. Yeah, and I'm going to make Bobby Roode versus John Cena. All right, so can I'm going to take wow. Bobby Roode. From oh no, this, Bobby Roode! No, no, it's Bobby okay. Roode's it's okay. Schedule. We're going to take Bobby Roode from this ma- from this six nine. <laughs> I can't. What the fuck? The Triforce match? Whatever this thing is. <laughs> the uh, the we're triple take threat six Bobby man Roode ten. off of this three-man team we're gonna swap them up to face john cena and an undertaker will instead team with eric young and austin aries <laughs> yes. okay sounds good yes and somewhere uh antonio garza's head just exploded <laughs> you guys ruined my match last year so i had to ruin something you know I'm what we did and I, I really, that was my match from last deserve to be punished <laughs> for it damn it I, I would never ever do that in probably real business, but hey, it's Mayhem Mania. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> love the match with John Cena versus Bobby Roode. Yeah, yes. but it was at the co- it was at the expense of the Undertaker. <laughs> hey, you know what? Undertaker well, teaming else with Eric it. Young. Yeah, that's the streak is over, and maybe Eric will think, "Hey, we're going to start you in a new streak in tag team matches." <laughs> <laughs> I just saw Undertaker as part of Sanity now. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be awesome, actually. <laughs> Sorry, oh. I ruined it. Sorry, Undertaker Garza. and Big Demo and Sandy. Garza should come back and do the midweek war more. Maybe I wouldn't have ruined this match. <laughs> there it is. Oh no, that was that was that was my match you ruined. But it's oh, all right. Oh, oh, sorry. No, but, it's okay. No, it's no, okay. no, it's, it's fine. It, the, the original concept was Garza's, so yeah. You guys can curse me forever, I hope. All right, well <laughs> all right. Um, Larry, I didn't know uh, The Undertaker teaming with Eric Young and Austin Aries was something I needed in my life, but now I do. So thanks, Chris. Um, next up, we're going we're doing something different this week. We want to get some new uh, fresh ideas in here. So we're going to bring Billy in from the chat room, and uh, Mad Mike, you're going to be on deck, but Sorg, let's find out what Billy's got from for Billy, us. From Billy, it came from the chat room, and uh, just so it wasn't spoiled or in case the chat room crashed, I've been handed like a note in the back of math class. Just like the Oscars. <laughs> so Moonlight won Best Picture, <laughs> so- y'all. Oh, moonlight in the main event. <laughs> sure, it was a while. Moonlight. Moon. Who is this moonlight? Wow, there's a lot of words. Moonlight. <laughs> moonlight Drive. So we're so we're booking Johnny Mundo. Moonlight Driver, right? Um, so Billy says, add Big Show to Samoa Joe, Braun Strowman, and Ellsworth match. All right, it's Billy. Big Show's last mania. Oh he needs a spot. Is it his last video? Well, yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. He's he's speculating that he's going to be done by February. Of he's next like year. almost fifty. Like I yeah, think he wa- I think he wants one last Royal Rumble. Rumble. See those abs? But he needs to I, to live. <laughs> so I think he wants no. one last Royal Rumble. I think that's pretty much it. Um, Mad Mike, you're up. Sorgatron, you're going to be on deck. Oh, Let's get to work, um, Mike. Oh man, this is tough. Um. You know what? Last week we were complaining that that women's tag team match doesn't have any fresh faces in it. Like, like we were saying that, and that's fine. That that's fair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tag team to that, mm-hmm. and we're going to make it a triple threat tag team match. And I'm going to put the best friends in the world, Bailey and Sasha. All right. Ooh. About time we got. I got to represent my girl. I got to represent my girl, Bailey. So what was that match again? Uh, it's going to be Mickey James and Beth Phoenix versus Lay Cole versus Bailey and Sasha Banks. Oh, we just keep tacking on teams. We just keep adding just, people. Just, wait, so wait, wait. Is, well, I don't want to replace Lay Cool because I put Lay Cool in there in the first place. Oh, it's, mm-hmm. it's a tag team. Triple threat. Tri- triple threat. Tag team, triple, triple threat, threat team. women's match. Oh. I, I, I know. Don't These matches get so you don't want to see that match. Them anymore. Uh, mm-hmm. I really want to add to that, but we have so many tri- tag teams that are... Oh, don't. 
feel yeah. bad. Um, yeah. Sorgatron, you're up. Larry, you are going to be on deck. All right. Well, right. we did end up with Bobby Roode against John Cena. Ooh, man. Maybe so I... is it Brapadu versus Glorious? Brapadu mm-hmm. versus Glorious. <laughs> and I gotta think. I gotta think. Okay, what what could what can what can improve on this? Like they, 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 like it's on paper it's interesting, right? A lot of lot of charisma. I think I'd love to see Bobby Roode and John Cena, you know, go at it on the mic. But man, somebody somebody needs to be switched switched in or out or or, or something. And. Uh, it's escaping me. It's escaping me. No, not an edge. He's he can't go. He can't go. Hmm. I didn't see Undertaker's hanging out in the end. <laughs> Undertaker <laughs> is slumming it in Impact Land. He is slumming it in Impact Land. I got I got a good one for, for that. Bobby Roode. If you don't want to touch that. Okay, wait, wait, I wait, wait. wait. So that. we need we need to fix that tag match. Which which tag thing. match? Well, geez, which one? Um, this one here? That one with Undertaker. Let's see, we got Undertaker, Ares, and and Eric Young, right? That's right. Can I, only, I can't replace a team, right? Yeah. You can, you can replace just out you the can whole replace, match. Yes, uh, we let people swap tag teams in for other tag teams. You can swap in a new three man team and take out one tag of Tag teams for tag teams? Can you swap? Then let's listen. I mean, that, that seems fair, right? Then listen. So let's, let's, let's fix this. Let's fix this. We're going to keep <laughs> with the awesome. <laughs> no wait actually the team the can team. you swap two people within that three man team or does that I, 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 no, I, I, that would be against the uh, spirit see Hardy's got okay. signed right. so we can't do that bastards hold on because I realize Hardy, Hardy's and a Lucha Bot Vanguard 1 fuck that out <laughs> yes, apparently <laughs> the Hardy's out. and a dilapidated boat <clears throat> oh <versus>. man <laughs> oh man I just want to see come back as someone named Skarsgård <laughs> Let's turn. How about Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy and Willow? They got to be a team. And Hardy just Jeff Hardy rolls under the ring. Willow comes out. Willow rolls under the ring. Jeff Hardy comes out. It worked for the <laughs> I'm bells. Distracting you. Come on, come on, Sorg. Let's go. All right, awesome. Impact Heroes is going to turn into something a little bit different. Let's just go full on with this. Goodbye, Undertaker. Goodbye, Either Undertaker. way, one way or wow, another, goodbye, lives. Undertaker. He'll live another day, I'm sure. Maybe he'll get new pants and contacts too. I don't know. Um, <laughs> man, there's a dream match: Mil Mortes versus Undertaker. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. Uh, not, but not really. But uh, where you at, to Joseph on that one? Mm-hmm. I, wait, wait, wait. First of all, wait, I just noticed. I didn't notice this before, but there's completely a final resolution um, graphic creeping into the main event mafia. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got to take those images where you can get it. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not fashion. I'm not fashion. I'm gonna see the final resolution kind of in the corner. Hey, there. WrestleMania <laughs> should always be the final resolution, Sork. <laughs> it should be. When, when you're it looking really for people, when you're looking for pictures of them in suits and sunglasses, you you don't get picky. No, you, you just don't. get it. No, you don't. Uh, so you, you do have what? a team in mind here. You weren't just gonna just kill because this I love the dancing. Uh, we we killed we killed Undertaker off of that team, and uh, and we're gonna replace him with No Way Jose. Because I just want to see Austin Aries dance again. Okay, okay. So we're not killing the entire team. We're only killing one, the Undertaker. All right, I got you. Right, 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 right. We're, 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 Wait, we're, I thought you said we can't do that. No, you, I, can replace I can one, re- you can replace one person. Right. But you're yeah, asking if you can replace two people I, in the tag team. I don't, I don't think it's, you know, okay. I, I like, like the if idea. If you wanted to replace like two out of the three in the tag team match, I wouldn't be able to okay. let you do that. All right. Just to clarify. Okay. My rules, my game. I change Fair them all enough. the time. Fair enough. I mess with people. I didn't Sorry. get through that. Get to that page in the book yet. Add another page to the rule book. <laughs> no way, Jose. No way, Jose. No, no way, Jose? Jose. No way, Jose. Got it. All right, Larry. Um, you're up here. So it. God, I don't even know what you wrote. No way, Jose. <laughs> no way, Jose. <laughs> Eric Young. Eric Young and Austin, Austin Aries. Aries. <clears throat> versus Grand Metal League and DIY versus the main event mafia. <laughs> yeah, All right. With the pogo stick. I'm going to add to... I, I, can you back up on your mic, please? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm going to add to the women's tag team. <laughs> oh, no. And oh, so, no. wait. That means I come back next week for the Antonio... <laughs> Quiet, you. The Alex Carr's rule. So, it's going to be Same. Mickey James and Beth Phoenix versus Lay Cool and... Who? Versus Mickey James and Beth Phoenix versus Lay Cool versus Bailey and Sasha Banks versus okay. versus Emma oh. and Dana Brooke. Nice. No, and Emma Lena. No, 
No, you what? Can't, no, 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 come on. No, 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 Why? No, she can do the three faces of Foley. It's an illegal move. <laughs> she that's like two completely different characters. But it's it's in the realm of reality. Yeah, why not? Why can't they be signed to two she's different places? Really not two people. You don't know that. <laughs> Personal foul. Personal foul of Mutilator Larry. What? You you know, if you said Emma and Dana, I was actually thinking of adding them instead of Bailey and Sasha. But <laughs> All right, fine. So, I'll find somebody other than Emmalina. So Emma and a- Emma or Emmalina and no, no we're, we'll do Emma and evil evil Terminator because Emmalina hasn't debuted yet. <laughs> Apparently, well, I think they released. I think they released. Did. Her. No, they released her. Oh, <laughs> uh, they're still working on. We the, wish Emma. Know. We wish Emmalina the best. Right. In, seven, in so like long. fifteen weeks, we're gonna have Emma back. So. That's right. Can't wait. How's it feel? How's it feel? Mm. What are you filling that spot with? A lot of ladies. A lot of ladies out there. A lot, a lot of, of NXT. A lot of ladies. A lot of Alexa NXT. Alexa Bliss. Britt Baker. Whoa. Whoa. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why not? You're getting really lax. I think she'd take that booking. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag Britsburg. <laughs> She's got a lot of great promo picks out there, uh, Garza. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Garza's like, what the fuck am I going to do now? Yeah, 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 all kinds of Just check her Facebook or Twitter. You'll find something. Don't worry about it. I mean, I haven't met this guy, but I'm sure he hates me. <laughs> well, that's great because he ne- hates himself. He Wait, where, the where's you on? fair? He none none of us have ago. met Garza. Yeah, We're actually, not even none, sure none, he of, exists. none of us have met Garza. He doesn't. He's not a real person. He's no. He lives in like El Paso. Does he live in he Vanguard One? He is a one? construct. He is a construct of the Wrestling Mayhem show, just like Little Nickel, like Zordon. <laughs> yes. Exactly All right, here's the card, like Zordon. Zordon. After round seven, <laughs> AJ eight, Styles versus eight. Shinsuke Nak. Round eight. After yeah, right. This is round eight. AJ Styles versus Shinsuke Nakamura, Charlotte versus Asuka, Bobby Roode versus John Cena, Bray Wyatt versus Chris Jericho, Samoa Joe versus James Ellsworth versus Braun Strowman versus The Big Show, Kane versus Finn Balor, <clears throat> Mickey James and Beth Phoenix versus Lay Cool versus Bailey and Sasha Banks versus Emma and Britt Baker, <laughs> No Way Jose and Eric Young and Austin Aries versus Grand Malik and DIY versus Booker T, Kurt Angle, and Scott Steiner. Can I tell you what my pick would have been if you would have allowed me to swap two of those people in the three-man tag? Sure. No. <laughs> tell us on Talking Mayhem Mania. Very um, nice. And I will also uh, brief everybody. Next Tuesday is Patreon in the bank. Only Patreon subscribers. And supporters of the Wrestling Mayhem Show get to come and play. We've got some crazy stuff planned for you. An unprecedented option for um, the uh, Patreon subscribers. It's going to change the game, Sorg. I'm going to reveal exactly what's going to happen next week on Talking Mayhem Mania, the hottest damn new internet show. Next to yours, of course. Back to I'm you. I'm so excited. There you I'm go. So now it's that. time to find out. Brand is excited. He says he has his match lined up what he wants to do so mm-hmm. what did you guys learn from wrestling this week sitting on the floor rules <laughs> well at least it was better than our experience 19 rows back on the other side because that was kind of rough so taking you with me next time you're taking me with you <laughs> i don't know i'm kind of liking the boxes i've been ending up in those are nice yeah it's like you're mike tyson a little bit you get, to, you get leg room <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah oh that's the big thing is the leg room been kind of nice so um larry what'd you learn um i, I learned it, it seeing the show live has a very different feel when you don't have to listen to four announcers mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's very similar to listening to it or to watching the show on mute <laughs> I, I miss tomorrow we all did. Apparently, everybody did. Just presence. Apparently everybody we did. all miss tomorrow a little That's bit. That's right. Mad Mike, what did you learn? I learned the news of Lucha Underground is on Netflix. It's on Netflix, you guys. You have no excuse anymore. I don't have no, Netflix. For real, um, I learned that 
No, seven ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. I think it might be up to eight ninety nine. Screw that. I'm gonna get rid of the WWE it's, network. It's save some money. cheaper than the network. You cannot go it wrong. Actually, it actually is, and you can get even cheaper if you get like only SD. Like it'll it'll, it'll go even lower. Like because Lucha Underground's only in SD. No, it isn't. What I thought it was. I. I Pretty. Okay, fair. Okay. Um, I, I, I thought it was only an SD. Anyway, um, I also learned that um, WrestleMania doesn't care about what we want. It doesn't <laughs> care about what we want. I don't know. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. No, no. no. Doesn't yeah. care about what uh, we want. Austin Aries it, and Neville it, is a good match. Yeah, that's going to kick it, ass. No, that's, no. I'm looking All forward right, to that. I'll, I'll rephrase. The WrestleMania main events don't care about what we want. Okay. The undercards are usually stellar. The main events don't give a fuck. I'll repeat my statement from earlier this week. Mad Mike complaining about wrestling while wearing mouse ears is my new favorite thing. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> it makes everything better. Every it week. Makes everything better. Uh, next, year, next week, I will debut new mouse ears oh no that that's a promise are you gonna wear these for the rest of the midweek war this is gonna turn into i, ca- I kind of might yeah i kind of might the theme. make it the theme mm-hmm. that's great i kind of might um uh <laughs> the slurring has increased yes <laughs> from the chat I room from the chat room hold on hold on brandon learned that smackdown live does not overrun like raw does no, it, it was a little oh, bit that like, pissed me off we're watching that no, clock. Se- se- seriously we're- uh, no, I, I was watching SmackDown Live on DVR. Yes. I didn't know what Shane said. Because it cut off? Yeah, yeah it cut oh, off completely. I, I thought it was another one of those things where it went over 205 Live. So I watched the first minutes of 205 Live and nothing with Shane happened. So I'm like, well, shit, I got to watch Talking Smack first. And then Talking Smack showed me what Shane actually said. And I'm mm-hmm. like, oh, that was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I got oh. to call it. You got some follow up on that? Yeah. What do you got? While we were at the show last night, mm-hmm. I caught a tweet from Bobby. Mm-hmm. That'd be our, our very own Bobby of J Town. So that's AJ Styles versus Todd Chrisley at Mania now. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw that he had retweeted. Um, somebody had done the, the commentary on it, and it was Shane. AJ Styles says he doesn't have an opponent at WrestleMania. He does. Chrisley, oh girl, please. <laughs> wait, wait. So it got he got cut off mid. S- Apparently, mid sense. Wow. Yeah. So yeah, that was what had everybody up in arms last night. So yeah, I I had that completely like images on my phone to share with Holy you guys. Holy crap! Um, well, but, Sorg, but best, remember best we, cliffhanger for talking smack ever. Sorg, we talked about exactly. midweek war. Yeah. No, sorry, we talked about midweek war like with two thousand two hundred five live uh, that they had extra bits of SmackDown of AJ walking to the back and everything. We thought that was going to be a thing going into Mania, and that's what I thought this was too. Like, Shane was going to give a big promo and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But no, it just they just mistimed it. Yeah, yeah. Hey, TV's hard, man. Um, from, the chat, from the chat, <laughs> Billy learned that Mike is amazing drunk. Thank you. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, TM mentioned tomorrow has been eerily, eerily silent on social media. Well, I mean, he's been getting in too much trouble with that. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we talk about very, very quickly that bring it to the table bullshit? You didn't like it? <clears throat> no, I fucking hate it. Really? Why? Fucking hate it. Because I hate, I like Corey. I like JBL. The other fucking guy, I forget what his name is. He can rot in hell. Like as far as, no. as, in, as far as the network goes. I'm going to disagree because I like, like he watching wants to them speak pick on for him. the internet. Mm-hmm. He's just towing the company line and it's horrible. Well, he, he's, he's the main guy and that's his job, I think, in that show. And the other guys. Can no, speak but he up. wasn't the guy they had on the first drain to the table. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. No, he wasn't. Yes, he was. I could have swore he go, wasn't. Go, he we're, not gonna argue, we're, we're not going to argue it. Somebody Wikipedia it. But, but I thought it was it was done a lot better that time. Yeah. I actually have some more like fan interaction. Oh, what's going on over here. there? Uh, Brendan Cassioli had actually tweeted that he learned that Raw can go three hours and into overtime, but SmackDown Live gets cut off for, for Chrisley. So, again, that was going back <laughs> to that one. Uh, we also have a... Uh, actually, this is a follow-up from from the big question. Uh, Cena thirteen or three sixteen. 
Mayhem Show at Lucha El Rey, have a little cornet head in bottom corner. Whoever makes it explode wins the match. <laughs> <laughs> I've been trying to squeeze that one in oh, for like ever. That is a good idea. If those don't know. That is a really good cornet idea. Cornet hates Lucha Underground. E- every time that we inflate the cornet head, a tennis racket should smack it in the face. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, and? Uh, and? I actually learned something in wrestling this week. What did you learn? I learned that I love it when everything makes Daniel Bryan want to punch Miz in the face. Oh, that's great. Yes. That was great. Yes. Yeah. That was, that was I think, one of my favorite segments from last night. Mm-hmm. I, I like that, except that Miz is 100% right. Well, that's the thing. Like, I love the Miz, too. Like, <laughs> I, I was, but that's, that segment was just amazing. And so I was man, like, that's so cool. <laughs> it got you to believe. I mean, it really got your attention, right? I mean. He, heels being right really frustrates me as, as a watcher. You're conflicted, but, right? But, but, but the heels are supposed to believe that they're right. Uh, or else no, they're not but, great But heels. they're actually right. Like, AJ Styles is 100% correct. Hey, you know what? Jesse Ventura was pretty right about Hulk Hogan. Yeah, and he was unfortunately right about Donald Trump, too, but we're not going to talk about that. Nope, that's on the future political mayhem show. PMS. PMS. Look for it soon on iTunes. (laughs) Thank you so much, everybody. Mad Mike and the Mouse Ears. Yes. uh, Feel free to please take a look at 32 Manias of Mike. I am far more sober when I do that podcast. (laughs) Um, I run down... Literally every WrestleMania that's ever happened. If you think WrestleMania 11 is the worst, you might be wrong. And I will explain why in future episodes. But right now, I think we're on what? WrestleMania 15 or 14, sort? I think 14 might just came out. Yeah, I think 14 just came out. But there will be a WrestleMania. There will be an episode for every single WrestleMania if you need to get any more in the WrestleMania mood. There you go. And thank you, Mainstream Matt. Keeping it, doing his Noam Dar impression there. There you go. There you go. No chin music. No chin music. (laughs) And Mutilator Larry on the Twitter. Keeping it with us. And, of course, Producer Missy hanging out there. Giving us her her thoughts all through the night. Uh, Thank you so much, Chris to Joseph. Go check it out. Stream that Lucha Underground on Netflix and support those guys. So there's more happening there. And, uh, and of course, thank you so much to our people in the chat room all night long, like Billy, Tina, Brandon, and so many more throughout the night, and sticking with us uh, through some technical issues uh, that hopefully you don't notice later after I had all this stuff. Thank you. Until next time, Mayhem out. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait.